Greetings, everyone. This is Fred Coulter. Welcome to Church at Home. Church at Home is sponsored by the Christian Biblical Church of God, and we are dedicated to restoring original Christianity for today, which is the truth of God. And the truth of God is the only thing that is going to save us from all of the difficulties that are going on, but there are so many people who won't listen to it. There are so many people given to their own ideas, their own ideologies, their own religion, their own sexuality. And we honor them especially today, but hopefully as a church we continue to honor and welcome them throughout the entire year. Um, hi everyone, my name is uh, Will Rosine and I use they them pronouns. I'm um, queer, I'm trans, and I'm a non-binary individual. Pride is also me coming up to the lectern, wearing a crop top, showing a little skin at the church. That's crazy. Oh my And with your transgenderism, and also they call it gender affirmity or affirmation, it is guaranteed to be 100% failure. Now, why is that? Well, we have to look at the Bible and see what it says first. So this is sexualization of the world number eight. So let's see what God did originally. So we understand that God has set in motion certain things that can not be altered because the reality is God is creator. And he made us and designed us. So let's read it here in Genesis, the first chapter, the very first lesson that people ought to read. And how many people have the Bible but don't read it, or have the Bible and misunderstand it, or have the Bible and reject it and say, well, it's just written by men, and they don't give any credit to God that he can inspire men to write what he wants them to write. Genesis, the first chapter, verse 26, and God said, let us make man in our image. So we're made in the image of God. And after our likeness, that means we have independent free moral agency. We can think, we can make, we can do, we can build, we can imagine, we can do all of the things because God has given us the mind and the intellect to do it. And let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, over the fowl of the earth, and over the livestock, and over all the earth, and over every creeping thing that crawls upon the earth. Now, that is a tremendous gift. A little sidebar. But what has man done with the creation of God, with the earth, with everything that is there? Look at the troubles we have today because we reject God. We don't believe God. And we will see God made male and female. He never made anything halfway in between or a crossbreed as men are trying to do now. Verse 27, And God created man in his own image, and the image of God created he him, and he created them male and female. And in doing so, he gave them the power of reproduction. And that is done by God's great creation of genes and chromosomes. And human life must come from human life. It can't come from any other animal, and it can't come from transgenderism. And God blessed them, and God said, let them be fruitful and multiply and replenish the earth and subdue it. Now, that's what's missing today. The blessing of God is missing today. 
Why? We'll find out in a little bit so we can understand how did we get to this point. Now then, we have the account here in chapter 2 about that God form with his own hands. Now you read in the first chapter, God spoke everything, and they came into existence. But with man, he personally created and formed man, male, and woman, female. And everything about the body, all the laws about the body, all the laws about how it works, how it runs, how we see, how we breathe, how we think, how we stand, how we sit, how we talk, and all of these things God put in us. So let's read it. Verse 7, And the Lord God formed the man out of the dust of the ground and breathed in into his nostrils the breath of life, and man became a living being. Then he already had prepared the Garden of Eden for him, so he put him into the garden. Now then, here's one of the very first lessons for everyone. Now, Adam and Eve were unique because God created them as adults and put into their minds a language so he could communicate directly with them, and he could instruct them, and he could show them what they needed to do. And he also, in putting them in the Garden of Eden, he gave commands. Now, let's see what it is. And Adam was to dress and keep the garden. A little sidebar on the word keep. That also means to guard and protect. Let's read it. Verse 15, The Lord God took the man and put him in the Garden of Eden to dress it and to keep it. And the Lord God commanded the man, saying, You may freely eat of every tree in the garden. Now that's very generous, right? Every tree the fruit, the berries, the apples, the cherries. Then he gave a warning, because God has given free moral agency, and free moral agency is this. He's given us the independent free moral agency, you can abbreviate that, IFMA, to choose. And we need to choose between what is right and what is wrong. Now, when Adam and Eve were created and in the garden, notice what God said about a particular tree. But you shall not eat of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, for in the day that you eat of it, in dying you shall surely die. So they knew. Adam knew. Eve knew, as we will see. Now then, God had a lesson for Adam to learn. He brought by all the major species, and he saw them, male and female, male and female, male and female, and isn't that the way the whole creation of God is set up, one way or another, with all the different animals and birds and creeping things? Yes. Verse 18, And God said, It is not good that the man be alone. I will make a helper compatible for him designed specifically for man, and man designed specifically for woman. And any other perversion of that is sinning against God. Verse 21, And the Lord God caused a deep sleep to fall upon Adam, and he slept, and he took one of his ribs, and afterward closed up the flesh beneath, Then God made the rib, which he had taken out of the man, into a woman, and he brought her to the man. Now, Adam understood what went on. So when he woke up from the deep sleep that he was in, and here was the woman, because God told him what it was going to be. And Adam said, This is now bone of my bones 
and flesh of my flesh. She shall be called woman because she was taken out of man. Now, the next verse is one of the most important verses in the Bible and goes all the way through time. All the way through time. And you cannot change this perfect ideal of man and woman as husband and wife. Any change or perversion to it always leads to trouble, always leads to sin, always leads to difficulties. So, Adam said, For this reason shall a man leave his father and mother, shall cleave to his wife, and they shall become one flesh. And they were both naked, man and his wife, and they were not ashamed. Now then, a lot of people don't believe in Satan the devil. But the truth is, he's got them captured. And they think that with their free moral agency that they can make anything happen and make anything work and, and confuse all the things concerning sex and try and have scientific things done to change men into women and women into men. Now then, we're introduced to the serpent who is called in Revelation 12, Satan the devil, the ancient serpent. He comes as an angel of light. He comes to make his lies appear good. And he comes to reason with people so that they will believe him instead of God. And that goes all the way back to Adam and Eve, and that's precisely what we have today with the difficulties that we're facing confronting all of these, these gender changing and operations. So the serpent was more cunning than any creature of the field which the Lord God had made, and he said to the woman, Is it true that God has said, You shall not eat of any tree in the garden? An outright blatant lie. Well, Eve had already been instructed, so she knew. So she answered back to him. The woman said to the serpent, We may freely eat of the trees of the garden, but the fruit of the tree that is in the middle of the garden, God indeed has said, You shall not eat of it, neither shall you touch it, lest you die. Now, even though God explained what death was, they really never knew what death actually was. So here is Satan's lie that comes all the way down through all the religions today. That is, you have an immortal soul. So if you have an immortal soul, you're not going to die because your soul will go to heaven or your soul will go someplace else, whatever whatever that religion says, and that's an absolute lie. All religions of this world are not from God. And if they're not from God, where did they come from? They came from Satan the devil. We'll see that here in just a minute. And that's why we have this whole rush and push to sexualize the whole world. And fortunately, there are a lot of countries going against it, and they're saying we're not going to go with this gender affirmation and sexualization of our country the way that it's being palmed off in America and other countries. Now back to Genesis 3, verse 5. For God knows that in the day you eat of it, then your eyes shall be opened. Now, open to sin, but closed to righteousness. Automatic. And you shall be like God, deciding good and evil. So he said to Adam and Eve, and that's the message that is today. Oh, you don't need to read the Bible. Oh, you don't need to understand what's in the Bible. You can make up your own mind. Look at all the scientific facts that we have today. 
Look at what we can do. Yes, and look at all of the sin and look at all of the crime and look at all of the wretchedness that prevails because of it. You think we live in a good society today? Huh? No. And that's because of the series that we gave Satan out of the closet. And he's controlling the world. And he's controlling the establishment in every country. And the whole world have rejected the true God. And it goes right back here to Genesis, the third chapter, the same thing. So, Eve decided to try it. You know, the saying goes, try it, you like it? Well, look at what happened. So let's read it, because this is the story of every man and woman down through history. Every nation, every empire, everything to do with human beings, they have followed Satan the devil, and they all end up in destruction. And America and many countries in the world today are facing destruction because of going against God. Now, let's see what happened. And when a woman saw that the tree was good for food, it was pleasant to the eyes, a tree desired to make one wise, she took of its fruit and ate, and she also gave to her husband with her, and he ate. Now, Adam could have stopped it there, but he didn't do it. And the eyes of both of them were opened, and they knew that they were naked. That means they had a guilt complex because they knew they went against God. Now, there are certain things that human beings do that they know is wrong, but they do it because Satan is there as the spirit power behind to make it happen. Look at all of the recent killings. Look at all of the drugs. Look at all the transgenderism. Look at all of the homosexuality. Look at all of the witchcraft. Look at all of these things that are out there in the world, which we find in the Word of God. God says, don't do it. Just like God told Adam and Eve, don't eat of that tree. But they did. And they sewed fig leaves together and made coverings for themselves. Then you know the rest of the story. God came and said, Why did you hide yourself? Oh, we were afraid. Well, God knew where they were. Then he said, Have you eaten of the tree which I said not to eat of? Adam said to woman. The woman said, No, it was a serpent. Huh. You're responsible for your own free moral agency. That's the whole lesson here. And when you go against God and his laws, and his laws are absolute, just like the law of gravity, the laws concerning all the sexual morality that we need, which we have covered in previous segments, are absolute laws. And there is an absolute penalty that comes. That's why I can tell you in great assurance that all of this transgenderism and all of these operations are going to be 100% failure. And they better get this out of the schools. Some are. They better get this out of the nations. Some are. They better get this out of their lives. Some are. So let's read on. And the man said, The woman whom you gave to be with me, she gave me of the tree, and I ate. No! And isn't that the way people reason today? Something happens and it's God's fault? So then what happened? Adam was cursed. Eve was cursed. And Satan was cursed again. They were driven out of the Garden of Eden and couldn't have contact with God. And look at what happened to the world in 1,500 years, beginning with the killing of Abel by Cain. 
All right. Let's see what the world came to right here in Genesis, the sixth chapter. After all this time in 1,556 years, there were probably about 2 billion people on earth. Now, I want you to think about the numbers of that as I read this. Genesis 6, verse 5. And the Lord saw that the wickedness of man was great in the earth, and every imagination of the thoughts of his heart was only evil continually. Continually. How many people really think about God? Well, try watching some of these great sporting events with thousands of people there. Are they thinking of God? Do they know anything of God? No. So, then God brought the flood. After the flood, they got all evil again. And then we come to the point of Sodom and Gomorrah, and Sodom and Gomorrah is the lesson that everybody needs to learn today. Because every sexual deviancy that is being practiced today was practiced then, and what did God do? There were not even 10 righteous people. And the only ones out of there was Lot and his family. And then God rained fire and brimstone from heaven upon it. All of these things are going against the absolute reality of God. One, men cannot become women. Now, you can fill them up with all kinds of hormones. You can do all kinds of surgical things upon them, but they are not women. And they cannot have the women's facility to be able to carry children, but they're trying to make it happen. But it will never happen, and what they will produce will be freaks if there's any production to be done. And all of these scientists and all of these doctors who are in on it, they are just like Mengele of the Nazis in World War II. One hundred percent satanic demonism. And this all needs to be rejected by understanding the Word of God, by understanding the truth of God, by realizing what we need to do. When God says, with the Ten Commandments, no adultery, that means any sexual deviancy from there. Okay? He means it. Look at what's happening because we reject all the commandments of God. Killing and murder and rights. Just here recently, man went out and killed 22 at first count and 30 wounded. And mass shootings and killings. Why? Because Satan is out of the closet. And Satan is the God of this world. And he is the one who is putting all of these thoughts and all of these things into the, into the hearts and minds of people today. And why we have the lawlessness that we do. Let's come to Matthew 24. Let's see what Jesus said. And remember, Jesus was God manifested in the flesh, and his word is true, and everything that he said is true, and everything that in the Bible is the word of God, and here's a prophecy we are seeing, we are living, and so forth. And all of this transgender thing is going to come crashing down in one big heap of pain and agony and wretchedness and stupidity. Matthew 24, verse 11. And many false prophets shall arise and deceive many, and because lawlessness, that means against the laws of God, against the truth, lawlessness shall be multiplied. And that's what we're seeing everywhere. Not just increasing, but multiplied. The love of many shall grow cold. Now, let's see what he says over here in verse 37. 
because he tells us what this is, because history repeats. So here we are, verse 38. Now, as it was in the days of Noah, so shall it also be at the coming of the Son of Man. For as in the days of Noah, before the flood, they were eating, they were drinking, they were marrying, they were giving in marriage until the day that Noah entered the ark. And they were not aware until the flood came and took them away, so shall it be at the coming of the Son of Man. And that's what we're looking at today. Because Satan the devil is running this world. Now, you need our books. First of all, you need to understand who we are in prophecy. You need America and Britain in prophecy, their biblical origin and their prophetic destiny. You need to understand why were you born? Why were you born will tell you the wonderful things that God wants to give you, because we are wonderfully made, perfectly formed. All of those things are there, and you need to understand the love of God because of his making us the way that he is. And then you also need the book, Lord, what should I do? Because people have gone so far away from God, they need to come back to God, but they need to be told what are the steps to come back to God, and people need to come to God. They need to repent, and repentance is is stopping sinning, and sin is the transgression of the laws of God, because the laws of God are there working all the time. People cannot go against them and prosper. People cannot go against them and make the will of Satan will come out over the will of God, because it all leads to death and to destruction even though men think that they are wise and that they know how to do all of these things. Not so. So the whole world facing all of this push for sexualization is going to end in utter catastrophe and is going to end in sorrow and wretchedness and invasion and carrying away into captivity because of the sins of the people and of the politicians and the educators and the leaders in all of the countries of the world. So this is not a pleasant thing to look forward to, but if you turn to God and if you come to God His way, And all of that will be in these books that we will send you at no cost. So until next time, this is Fred Coulter saying, thank you for inviting me into your home. So long, everyone.